So we're here together because as promised, we're going to do a deep dive into AI Assist, which as we saw is fully integrated into Sanity Studio. Um, there are a lot of AI features and promises out there. So we wanna make sure that you know how this can bring you real value today um, and maybe why working with AI and Sanity is a little bit different. So one of those reasons is that AI Assist works with you in a really deep way within your own context and content types. So I wanted to show us first how our AI Assist tool knows about our content types, the shape of our document, and even complex formatting rules like headers and dynamic components. Sure. Um, how about we take a look, see it, see it in action? Yeah, let's look. OK. Um, to really start this, uh, the first thing I want to do is um, really start to scaffold out a body for my article. This um, is like a long form article for, let's say, like an editorial audience, right? Something like a listicle or some other thing that we want to engage our readers with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And <clears throat> and as an editor, um, you know, I really want just a good starting point with some bullet points, something to just get me going, get me past um, past writer's block. To, um, to yes, please. Mm -hmm. No, 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 continue. <laughs> to do this, um, I'm going to run a command called scaffold a new guide. Um, I want to start first by just looking at what the instructions look like. And just to kind of tell, so we can look at how simple the instructions really are. Um, my instructions here are basically telling this to, um, there we go. Uh, my instructions here are really just telling us, telling AI to uh, write the body of an article um, based on the provided title, um, the title of the article. You've already written a really engaging title, so I'm pleased about that. But I also see that you're giving it some additional instructions here. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's going to provide me five bullet points, and um, I'm actually able to give it some some uh, some context. You know, say talk about the history of the topic, the use case, and the future of the topic. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm providing this instructions on what types of actual um, objects to use. So within our portable text editor, we have these different types of content here, and um, if I scroll down, I can see the allowed types that our AI AI assist can actually call. Um, oh, that's really nice. I see that, like, for example, you're not letting it, let's say, possibly hallucinate an Instagram link that doesn't exist. We're keeping it tight just to those things that we know it's good at. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, finally, with my instructions, I'm just telling it to finish off with um, a heading of use cases and then provide three bullet points. Um, for use cases. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and run this and and see what we get. I'll go ahead and expand the editor so we can see this work in real yeah, time. We already we have our so. we have our purple AI assist indicator. I do love seeing it go line by line. I mean, that means that you can like, if you wanted to edit the first line, you're fine. I mean, again, there's never any race conditions in the studio, but um, you're able to kind of stay out of its way. You're able to, to do your own thing while it works elsewhere. Sure. Um, we go ahead and see that this actually provided us some some embedded um, types of objects. And, and this one, you know, is our first one. It's a call out that AI Assist was aware of our actual content model and content structure. Well, we've also got those H3s. We've got unordered lists. We've got ordered lists. It's really run the gamut of possible things you can put inside a P tag. Yeah, or outside of it. So this this sped us up a lot. As a as an editor, I feel like I'm ready to kind of hop in. You know, this kind of got my got my brain churning, got uh, got the gears working, and, um, and yeah. And so this was this was a great start for us. Yeah. So in the real world, you'll add your touch and human voice, and again, just actually create the article. But but we've got a, a lot of sort of deeply uh, formatted and nested things we can work off. So yes, once we've uh, generated our document, we now have sort of a starting point where we'll go through and we'll actually add the voice and color that we want to add. We just now have some facts and other useful information that we might use as we start drafting things. And once all that 
creative work is done, I think we can start uh, with the other part of AI Assist that we'd love to show to you, uh, which is translations. Uh, Ken, I know that you talk about translations with our customers a lot, so maybe you can talk about the different patterns and, and what we'll be showing here. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we really have two types of translations here at Sanity. We have our document level translations, which translate all the fields in a document, and then we have just field level translations, which are more one-off translations of single fields. Uh, the first thing I want to look at is the document level translation. And I want to make a copy of this document and open that up. And I've already done this, but yes, we're using our document internationalization plugin here where I can open up this Norwegian version. By default, it just copies over that English content, um, which is kind of, is great because you might have yeah. some fields that you want to persist between them or you might want to work on a field one at a time, but you're going to show us something different, I think. Yeah, you know, and it gives our editors a, a place to start um, if they are translating this by hand. But what we're going to do is have AI Assist translate this for us. Um, to do that, you can click the AI Assist button and just click Translate Document. All right, here we go. Yeah. Um, so what does that instruction look like? Is that something that you, you had to write yourself? Um, no, it actually comes out of the box um, with the new updates to our AI Assist um, plugin. Oh, incredible. Yeah, it's no work required. Um, so yeah, you can see as it was doing before, it's going field by field, probably uh, item by item here in our rich text, even that call out. So it's maintaining our formatting, also maintaining that component. And now it's done. That was less than a minute. And we now, again, have a starting point for, for showing translations and being able to... Um, edit and make things sort of more culturally relevant, whatever we need to do. But we now have done a lot of work um, just to get started. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's 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 really quick for AI Assist to um, to make these translations for us and to give give our editors that that great um, starting point. To... And to your point, this uh, translation pattern is really good if we have kind of these long form documents where almost everything should be translated. But there's other ways that we might use translation. Okay, so right, we just talked about sort of um, having everything in a in an entire document be translated, but sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you just want to translate a couple of things. Um, Ken, I know you're close to our customers who are also following this pattern. Maybe you have more to say about it. Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, like you said, there, there are there are times when translating all the fields in a document makes sense, but. There are also times when just translating certain fields um, is a better experience for the editor, um, and it keeps your data cleaner. Um, this is an example of a, a person, a presenter, and we don't want to translate the name or the slug or the image, but we do want to translate the biography. Um, right. Her name is going to be the same and uh, throughout all languages, so it doesn't really make sense to have to submit that or, or put that through a translator. Yeah, absolutely. And we could have you know, a number of fields here that do need to be translated. In this case, we just have one. Um, but what we can do is go up to our AI Assist, translate fields, and we can select um, the language we want to translate from and select the languages that we want to translate to. In this case, we just have Norwegian as our other language. But if we did have two, three, four, five different languages, we could translate to all of those at one time. And again, you don't have to set this up, right? It's just reading the possible languages and the That's sources. correct. Nice. That's correct. Um, and yeah, there she is in Norwegian. Excellent. Great. So now we have this translated biography, and we are good to go. Um, maybe it's time to move on to our next feature. So we've spoken a lot about uh, generating content. But large language models are good at more than just generating content. Um, yes, I are. think we can look back at that article we were just working on, our coffee, our coasters, sorry, our coasters article. Um, if we go back to, to our magazine space and uh, the English version. Um, so by indexing your project's content in the content lake, we can also take advantage of of that ability of large language models to be able to take in a lot of content and, and make sense of them and index them. And we can use that to surface relevant content whenever we need to. 
So yeah, this feature is great when I want something that's kind of like the thing I'm writing about, but I haven't memorized everything on my site. Um, it's able to sort of take in an information and also just the relevant parts of that information. So um, I guess I'll go ahead and click the, the instruction here. Yeah, just um, okay. <clears throat> this is really time saving for our editors to not have to um, we really even know about the content because the Sanity uh, Sanity Studio knows about what our content is. Um, it can really recommend similar pieces of content. I see that in the instruction itself, you've called out some some fields for it to pay attention to, but we could also make that part of our indexing process, right? But we could also just say, you know, we're only indexing this part or that part. So yeah. that also makes it really, really easy. Um, yeah. And I see that, yeah, what it suggested are, I'm in a article about coasters and I have things about living rooms and coffee tables, which seems pretty relevant. I have other content around, around bathrooms and that kind of thing. So um, we're able to kind of just choose what's relevant. Yeah, and this is really powerful. This is, this is an actual reference to these documents. So this isn't just static text or, mm -hmm. um, you know, just, just hard, hard copy. This is an actual programmatic representation. Right. These are these are now relationships between documents too, which we've shown in other demos can be very powerful for a number of things. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So in the spirit of scaffolding things, as we were talking about before, we might want to look at something more fun, like generating images. Yeah, I'm really excited for this one. Um, this, you know, a lot of times when when you start a new uh, a new article, you might be waiting on a designer to get you a, get you an image or for an illustration to be made. Um, so now with uh, our our image generation uh, with AI Assist, you can really have some sort of visual lorem ipsum um, or image representation of lorem ipsum. So we can start with. I'm, the <laughs> I'm being very detailed. So as we all know from generating images in our own lives, uh, you know, we want to sort of be as specific as possible. Um, like we said, it's just lorem ipsum, so it's just filler. But uh, I'm just writing something fun here, an oil painting, and I think I just clicked that instruction right here, right? That's right. Um... I think having fun is recommended in this case. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably in the docs, yes. Um, so as it works here, you'll notice that, again, I, I'm generating caption also from what I've written here. And now it's going to, to work through and upload kind of just the raw image, which I think will show up in my media browser. They look great. Uh, but now this is an image that I can actually see everywhere. Um, yeah, yeah, this is, this is amazing. Um, it is good, yes. But I can also rerun this, right? Now I have this prompt. I can run it as many times as I want, right? This is also something that I think that we're used to in our workflows using other other AI tools. But if I wanted to get more serious or if people wanted to know what my prompt was, it's now here. I'm a little bit, you know, shy about this one, so I might be more serious. You might class it up a little bit. I, yes, let's see something that's maybe more realistic for this article. There we go. And again, I can rerun. So again, we're trying to, the studio itself is, is a place to kind of, again, just be a bit creative and and be able to have the kind of ease of tools that we're, we're used to yeah. um, while it works on other things. I'll wait for this one to be done. And then I think we can, uh, we can hopefully show a, a nice serious image and then, and then be able to speak. This looks great. Uh, yeah. That's so many coffee cups. Um, <laughs> <I> generated. <laughs> it's true. Well, cool. Well, thanks so much for showing that, Carolina. Um, Thank yeah. you, Ken, for all of your, your guidance on, on those prompts and how we can use AI Assist. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think to sum this up, we can really see that AI Assist helps us in numerous ways. Um, you know, we can create complex content with formatting and really embed different elements into our text. We can also use it to translate things with that same complexity, all that formatting, and not lose any of it as we move from locale to locale. Sure. Um, you know, talking about references and AI knowing our content, um, you know, AI can read from our content lake and it can provide us precise index content. Um, that's really powerful, saving, saving editors time. 
And again, as we're in a workflow and maybe waiting on other images or, or want to get some visuals out, we can use it to generate images for whatever we need within that workflow. Yeah. Well, Carolina, um, thanks so much for joining me and uh, really appreciate you spending the time to, to help out. Yeah, I guess that's it for us. Thank you so much. And do feel free to play around and we'll see what you make. Thanks, everybody. See ya. Bye.